Peace, family. Aquani, we go send the tomahawk. I need them pog. I got the squamps, and that is to say, good day, family and friends. How are you doing? It's two hawks. I'm actually on my way back home from the city. We were in New York on Monday, uh, holding an event with the New York Regional Office of the U.S. Census Bureau. Went very well. Shout outs to the brother Norris and Phoenix Moon for coming on through. Joseph as well brother from the Cree Nation uh, and of course all of the uh, representatives and tribal members that are associated with Fauna for making the trip um, and of course our, our good friends and colleagues over at the U.S. Census, the New York Regional Office, appreciate them for their continual partnership with Fauna as we try to work out all of this classification stuff that's going on. Um, so we actually, uh, my wife came down and my lovely daughter as well. Um, and the radiator in the car ended up cracking on the ride down, but Creator was good to us. We were able to make it, find a, a mechanic shop. Of course, we got, you know, those New York prices being out of towners, but, you know, the car got fixed. Um, and I caught the bus down this morning, picked the car back up, and I'm heading back, back up uh, northeast now. But just wanted to share a little bit. I think it's a very interesting topic, uh, one that will be coming to the forefront in the next few few months, um, especially as we roll around to the 2020 census. And it's something that I think is worth at least some conversation about so that individuals understand and know how to move accordingly. So in Fonda's research, um, and, in, and in our exploration, and in all of our workings and things of that nature, we've actually come to realize that there's at least five different classifications of Indians, at least five. Uh, first being, of course, the federally recognized Native Americans. And when I say Native Americans, I'm utilizing that terminology in terms of Indians who engage in that process and then their status changes. I'm not talking about the quote-unquote $5 Indians and all that. Uh, my family down in South County in Rhode Island, the Narragansett Indian tribe, were one of the first tribes to be federally recognized. Definitely Indians. Uh, some of the first Indians uh, that Europeans encountered. But, you know, they got federally recognized, so their status changed from Indians to Native Americans. So you got your federally recognized Native Americans. Then you got your state-recognized Native Americans, right? Because there's a lot of state-recognized tribes out there. That's what the ones in Virginia were that just recently got federal recognition. They were state-recognized. And once again, Native Americans, because once you get recognized, there goes that sovereignty. So your federal Native Americans, your state Native Americans. Then you've got your urban Indians, and this is what most of us are who are aware of and identify with our Aboriginal indigenous heritage, urban Indians. These are the Indians that are in urban areas, just like it sounds. Um, there's a whole classification, and that was very interesting for us to find out about a year, year and a half ago, the whole urban Indian status. Um, and y'all should definitely check into that. So that's three so far. Your fourth is your misclassified or unidentified Indians. And there's a lot of us out there as well. These are the individuals who can't prove any connection to Africa, but are calling themselves African-Americans, um, blacks, Negroes, whatever the case may be. Um, but they haven't, they haven't, they're like in that in-between phase because they, they, they're not saying that they're indigenous, even though a lot of them are. I'm not going to say all of them are, but a lot of them are. And they also can't prove any connection to Africa. So you're stuck on this place called Africa, America. So that's the fourth one, right? And then the fifth one, and I've been seeing this one around a lot lately. Um, and this is what I really wanted to talk about is this status of Indians not taxed. That's in Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution, I believe. Could be Article 2, Section 1. One of them. Uh, uh, gonna, someone check into that, but uh, Indians not taxed. And this is the one that I really wanted to speak about because I've been seeing this going around and a lot of people are saying, well, Indians aren't taxed. And that's, that's not true um, if you look at what the U.S. law states, right? So they did the uh, Indian Citizenship Act. I forget the exact year. I'm sorry. I'm driving right now, so I'm trying to concentrate and drive and talk to you. Um, but check that out, the Indian Citizenship Act, and what they pretty much said was that all Indians are citizens. Now remember, these things that they're stating are commercial claims, so they don't need to prove anything. It, 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 we, we need to get out of that mindset that they need to prove anything. They're making a claim against us. And if we're not properly rebutting that claim, 
well, then that claim stands as fact and law. So when they said all Indians are citizens, at the time, our people were actually thinking that that was a good thing to be. Some of our family here from uh, the Narragansett people and a couple of other tribes ended up moving um, when they were pushing all the Indians west and then ended up in a place in Wisconsin called Brothertown. So you'll see a lot of the names, one particular who I'm connected to is the Niles Line. And the Niles Line is a very solid line out in uh, Brothertown. My, my grand, one of my grandfathers, James Niles Jr. was out there. Um, and his father as well, James Niles. Very well acknowledged and respected Indian folk that were out that way. But they ended up actually going for U.S. citizenship, thinking that it would help them out. And it actually did them um, a disservice. So, a lot of us moved out that way and became citizens. And as a result of being a citizen, like any other U.S. citizen, you're subject to whatever the U.S. says. So, when we're talking about Indians not taxed, really what we're talking about is Indians who are still in a capacity as tribal citizens and foreign nationals to the U.S., a status which Fonda refers to as a foreign national non-resident inhabitant and tribal citizen of. So I am a tribal citizen, Nisu Wishawanag is a tribal citizen of the Meshipag Nahigansett tribe, of the Nahantik Nahigansett nation. That's what makes Nisu an Indian not taxed. His relationship with his tribe that pulls him out of that whole conversation about having been civilized. Because especially up here in the Northeast with the tribes who didn't move, and this is probably gonna to apply to most of the tribes or the Indians that stayed in their lands and got misclassified, because that's what happened. You could either go to a res and be an Indian or you could stay where you were at and get reclassified to something other than being an Indian. And you better shut up about being an Indian if you stay because they're either gonna come and take your kids from you, right? Throw them in an Indian school. They're gonna come if they're the clan. If you're in clan territory, they're gonna come and snatch your land for you and, 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 and hang you up on a, a tree and all of that sort of stuff. So they're gonna put the fear into you of their God. I'm not gonna say the fear of God. I'm gonna say the fear of their God because I don't know what God they was worshiping. It ain't the creator that created me. Um, but they're gonna put the fear of their God into those populations so that they keep their mouth shut about who they are. So a lot of us, because we didn't rebut that claim, you're under that status of being an Indian. And with that status of being an Indian, of course, they shored that up by making sure we got birth certificates, social security numbers, uh, driver's license, all of these things that we were getting when we were unaware of what had transpired that was shoring up their argument and their claim that we're actually their citizens, right? So all of us in our commercial juristic persons, the ones that, the colonized names that were given, the English names, those are all enumerated somewhere, right? Those are all shown to be a part of the U.S. trust and U.S. citizens. So yes, most certainly I can go on a census as Raymond L. Watson and fill out that I'm an American Indian, but in their system, Raymond L. Watson has already been enumerated. He's already been marked down. He's already locked down in their system as being what he is. So for those of us out there that are just looking to reclassify to our proper status, you have to understand just how deep this game goes. It's not as simple as, oh, well, I'll just change my status and then I'm not subject to the, that's, 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 that's not true. That's not true. So when we're looking at this Indians not tax status, once again, this is gonna be solely reserved for the Indians, the Aborigines, the, but the ones that they called Indians, because that's what they called the Aborigines of North and South America, Indians. Um, they're the ones who are gonna be Indians not tax are gonna be the ones who have maintained their tribal connections and citizenship with their separate tribal nations and who have been acknowledged by treaties that the U.S. is beholden to. So when I'm talking about Narragansett people, right, 
And this is the interesting thing about Nahigansett people. Since 1643, there's been a separation politically between the Nahigansett peoples of the southern part of what is now called Rhode Island and the ones that are in the northern part of what is now called Rhode Island. And my people come from the northern part. So there's been a, a, a political division since 1643. But my people are acknowledged in treaties with the British crown, with the Dutch, and with all of these different people. Verrazano, when he came here in the 1500s, bumped into Pocono, and to Narragansett, and was like, oh, these people are beautiful. So we're acknowledged in these documents and treaties and things of that nature that predate the formation of the U.S., which is why the Moors claim that all of this land is a maximum and under Morocco is totally false because our people was were creating treaties with the British crown that said nothing about Morocco and we didn't have any treaties with Morocco. So that whole argument's gone. But when we're talking about Indians not taxed, it has to be Indians who are in that status. Now, once again, Raymond L. is enumerated in the system as being what he is. And absolutely, Raymond L. is going to reclassify over so that it's on record that Raymond L. is an American Indian. But what's going to pull Raymond L., who is the juristic person that was created fraudulently, um, into the Indian not tax status is the fact that Nisu Wishawanag exists. And Nisu is a tribal citizen of the Mashipag Nayagant tribe. That's the only place that Nisu exists on paper. When that name was birthed commercially, Nisu Wishawanag, it was birthed by the tribe and the tribal trust. So therefore, it is owned fully and wholly by the Mashipag Nayagansett Tribe and Tribal Trust. There's no argument that any U.S. entity could make to say that Nisu was under their jurisdiction and that they created him. Raymond Dow, absolutely. Raymond Dow Watson, absolutely. Birth certificate, all of that. But Nisu was Shiwanag from the trust. So it is this separation and creation of the Tribal Trust which is what will pull people out of that regular Indian status and into Indians not tax if that's the route that you're looking to go. You can't just say I'm an Indian, you can't tax me. You have to look at what the laws say. And you have to also look at the fact that a lot of us have literally been colonized and quote unquote civilized. And all I look at is civilization is this colonization. When they were saying civilized, they meant colonized. So when they say you're uncivilized, they meant you're uncolonized. That's the way I take it. But most of us have been colonized. Most of us were thinking that we were African Americans, black people, colored folk. What's the saving grace in that? Well, it's the fact that it was all done fraudulently, right? We were forced into these positions. We were terrified into not, our ancestors were terrified into not sharing with their lineage who they were. So all of us are operating under these statuses. Is, is that a word? Statuses is but they were fraudulently placed upon us. So we have the right, and this is where A-drip and undrip and all those come into play, we have the right to reclassify to who we actually are because we did not make that transition uh, voluntarily. It was forced upon us, and it was forced upon us by individuals who knew what they were doing when they forced it upon us, knew exactly what they were doing when they forced it upon us. So it's fraud, and we can't be held liable are forced to take on the damages from fraud. And if we are who we say we are, then we have the right to be that. Now, I'm going to tie this into the census in a minute, right? But I just want to uh, finish up this fact. The only way that you're going to be able to get to this Indians not tax status is if you get together with your bloodline family, identify exactly where your people were prior to the U.S. colonization, and then form the trust. And that's the only way it can be done. You cannot form a band. You cannot say, oh, well, all of us were misclassified, so we'll all get together. And we, Because then you're not tying back to a specific land base, and you're not getting together with the rest of your tribal members. You don't have a government. You have a band. That's what a lot of these pan-aboriginal groups would be classified as by law, bands. Because there's a bunch of different Indians from a bunch of different tribes who are together. And... You cannot form a band and then say, well, we're going to have a land claim here because the people that are from that land have a stronger claim than you. They are a tribe. You are a band. 
some of their tribal members might be there, but that doesn't overtake or is, is not superior to the, um, the, the claim of the bloodline people who have been there. You can't run off with another group and they say, well, I'm from there too. And I'm going to bring all of these other people here because I'm from there and I'm with these other people. This is ours. No, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. So any interest or thought about going Indians not taxed, right? It all is going to have to start with you getting back with your family. Now, I want to state this, right? I want to state this and then I'm going to move on to where the census is coming in, right? I'm going to state this. Most of us aren't ready for that. Most of us, we want it, but we're not ready to put in what it's going to take to get to that level. I'll share my own experience. I, my grandmother passed away in 2016. I mean, 2006, I'm sorry. Now, before that, my grandmother, my mother, everyone, my great-grandmother, I had the, I had the very good blessings of having the opportunity to know my great-grandmother and my great-great-grandmother. Now, this is prior to me heavily getting involved into everything, but I had that extreme blessing and honor. And they told me, you're a Narragansett Indian. You're a Narragansett. Now, this is while I'm not on the rolls, not enrolled with the federal trial, and I don't want to even get into all of that in this discussion, but I was a Narragansett Indian. Once my grandmother passed in 2006, I decided that I needed to do more than just go to a powwow once a year. I needed to actually fully embrace and understand and apply my culture to me. And when I did that, not only did I get pushed back from the federal tribes that were around, I got pushed back from family, from family. So I've literally been at this stuff about 12 years and just starting to see the fruits of everything that's going on. I would say that my family, my family, it took me a good, well, just starting to see the fruits uh, of all of the energy and effort that's been going in. So this is my question to all of us out there, right? And mind you, this was arguing with them, fighting with them, not talking to them for a bit, going back and talking to them and explaining to them why I'm not talking to them, and ultimately being so consistent and persistent and sharing so much knowledge that was undeniable that they had no choice but to finally accept the fact that, okay, yeah, cuz, or bro's off a little bit, he's a little, you know, wild with it, but he knows what he's talking about. And it was at that point that my family really started to embrace and we were able to embrace other families who come from the same lines, other clans, and this is where the tribe comes in. So my question to you all is, cause everyone's so excited and everyone's coming up on this info and oh, I'm this and I'm that and you can't do this. How many of us are willing to put in 10, 12, 15 years before you see the fruits of your labor in order to enjoy this status that you, you covet so much? Because that's what it's probably going to take with a lot of us. Why? Because our families are messed up, right? You got this one not talking to that one. You got this one strung out on drugs. This one's off into the gang lifestyle, right? So everyone's everywhere, but they're still our family. They're still our family, right? But everyone's everywhere. And a lot of us just don't like each other. A lot of us don't want to talk to each other, can't stand each other. And these are our own bloodline family members, our clan members. So if it's going to take for you to get together with your clan and get that acknowledgement and have your family decide who your clan or tribal chief's going to be and move collectively as a unit and get a bunch of y'all together to agree and to take this step and make this commitment to move in this capacity, if that's what it's going to take, how many of y'all are really in a capacity to pursue that status of being an Indian not taxed? I'm going to say most of us aren't. And that's only from my personal experience. It's not a bash. It's not me trying to speak down on people or put myself up in a higher regard. It's just me being honest about the status and the state of where our people are in and the mentality that we have to come out of. They have been doing this for 400 plus years. Do we think that we're going to snap out of it in a couple of months after reading a couple of books? No. The knowledge is good. 
But now comes the hard work, the actual rebuilding of our tribes and our nations. So where does the census come in? Why, why, why am I tying all this into the census? Well, one of the great things, at least in my opinion, about this year's census is that for those of us who are enumerated, we can not only change our status over from that black or that African-American or that craziness over to an American Indian, but we can also now have the opportunity this year to write in the specific tribal nation that we are a part of, right? The tribal nation that we are a part of. So I can go in and write in Meshipag Nahigansa. So it's not just Narragansett anymore, but I can write the specific tribe that my peoples and my bloodlines come from. And because we're operating through trust, I can then make a claim that not only is Raymond L. Watson property of this tribe because he's repatriated over, and that's another element that we can we need to explore as well, because once the trust gets together, then you need to repatriate, not expatriate, because we're not expatriating from anything. We're repatriating, we're going back to where we were, repatriate over to your tribal trust. And once Raymond L. Watson is repatriated back over, now he's in a position to say, and yes, I'm an Indian not taxed. So on the 2020 census, you all are gonna have the opportunity after doing your research and getting your history down to then write into the census exactly who you all are. And if you talk to the census people now, they are very, very, very clear on the fact that they can't do what they used to do in the past, which is go and decide for you who you are because that's how a lot of our people got classified as colored, Negroes, mulattoes, all of this craziness by census people coming, looking at them, a lot of them being racist and saying, this is who you are. I know that's what you're saying, but this is who I'm gonna put down and this is what you're gonna be. So you have the opportunity as this 2020 census rolls around to in advance do your research, gather your family, come together as a clan or a tribe, come together with other clans and other tribes. Oh, a lot of traffic here hitting the Rhode Island line. Let me hop over into this lane. And then to put on record exactly, exactly who your people are. Now, this means going beyond this very generic term of I'm an Aborigine. Cool. From where? Oh, I'm a, 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 um, I'm a Nahigansen. Okay, cool. From where? You know, this is your chance to really get detailed and really have an opportunity to put on record who you are. From your mouth to theirs, from your pen to their paper. They're not gonna write it down for you, you're gonna write it. So now this also means, and this is another element that we came across, according to what we understand as the census goes, if 50 or more people are saying that they are the same tribe, well then that tribe will be acknowledged in the census. So think about that. All of us running around as Aborigines who don't get along with our family, you have the opportunity to have your particular tribe acknowledged on record with the Department of Commerce as being who you are, but it takes 50 people. Can y'all get 50 of your family members to agree on something? So if you can't get 50 of your family members to even agree on who they are and support, a couple of questions to ask. Are you really ready? Or do you need to put in some more time? And this is the one that I think hurts a lot of people. Are you the chief of your people? Because everyone, everyone's a chief nowadays. Everyone wants that title, right? Everyone wants that title. Everyone wants to wear their headdresses and everyone wants the acknowledgement and all that. But how many of us are actually chiefs in that we've run and gathered our family members together? Our family. Our family. Most of us have it. Most of us aren't willing to do that. We just want to run off, F them, I'm doing me, and that's not how our people were. So... 
if you're going to be what you are, you need to understand fully what you are and what your status is in this. You oh, oh wow, oh wow, hold on, hold on, oh wow. I just saw a hawk. Sorry, I just saw a hawk. Uh, most of us. I'm going to try to swing back around and grab that. I am swinging back around to grab that. But most of us are not in the capacity or have the ability to do that. Or even the interest. We want to just run off and be. And a lot of that comes from this colonial perspective that we can just do us. And, I, you know, I'm, I did it all by myself. And I'm on my own. And I, all of that's craziness. All of that's crazy. That's not how our people were. So... Several different statuses of American Indians Your federally recognized Native Americans Your state recognized Native Americans Your urban Indians This is what most of us are going to fall under when we reclassify, right? Your um, unidentified or misclassified Indians And then your Indians not taxed Understand what it takes and where you fall in those Because we're still up in this system, right? So you don't want to go making claims or taking steps That'll get you jammed up based upon these laws and the only way that you can fully and wholly pull yourself out is to create, establish that trust and repatriate to it. But you can't do that until you know specifically who your people are, where they're from, and can show that they predate this thing called the U.S. We got work to do, family. But as you can see, creative is most certainly opening doors for us to do it. So we have opportunity right now. If you're willing to put in that time and energy and effort to understand who you are and where you come from, then you have the opportunity to correct some things. Now, if we're going to keep up the foolishness, if we're going to keep arguing and fighting with each other and not wanting to deal with our family and just, I'm going to just do me, well, you, you'll go so far. Your knowledge will get you so far. But the knowledge is only going to take you so far. We have to get back to our culture and our ways. And knowledge is not culture and ways. Knowledge is knowledge, which is why sovereign citizens try to use the same laws that apply to Indians, which is why dirty moors try to use the same laws that apply to Indians, because knowledge is knowledge. The culture, the history, the bloodlines, that's what we have to get back to. And if we don't get back to it, then you're only going so far. Plain and simple. You can tell me anything you want, but until you get back to your culture, to your family, to building, to putting up with the nonsense that we hate, until we get back to that, then there's no argument for that Indian's not tax thing because it's not going to, you're not operating, you're still going to be a civilized Indian. Colonized Indian. Just some thoughts, been talking for about a half. I'm going to run in here and get a trash bag, then I'm swinging back to pick up that hawk. Maybe I'll throw up a video of it later on when I get it. Family, love y'all to death. Um, you know, reach out to the Sister Phoenix, reach out to Francis Turtle Gang, shouts to them both for coming through. Ask them them thoughts about the census and how we should be moving in it. And start to do the research and get the history down and know who you are so that you can move in the capacity that you need to move in so that we can properly get our people where they need to be. Aquani Kapish Kanas, that is to say, peace be unto you, and I hope to see you all soon. This is Two Hawks, Nisa Wushawanag, Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America. I hope.